Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today I have some handy tips for those of you out there who use Cineware a lot. Now if you don't know what Cineware is, it allows you to import Cinema 4D files into After Effects, which is really cool. And if you use Cineware a lot, these five tips are going to be huge to improve your workflow. So let's check them out. All right, so let's start out with one of the most common tips that you need to know when you're working with Cineware, and especially when you have a scene like I have here, where I have a externally uh, or a, a null here that's just going to, I want to export out so I can composite stuff on it inside of After Effects, like, you know, a lens flare as you do. So here's my little external compositing tag to ensure that this little null is exported out into After Effects. And here I have a, you know, somewhat complex camera morph uh, that has uh, a camera morph tag on it that I'm just morphing between these three cameras here. I have a target as well that these cameras are all looking through as well as some vibrate tags so that this is kind of like a nice organic type of move. Now, typically with just, you know, simple camera animation, I would be able to just go into After Effects, import my Cinema 4D file, go to Cineware Tips, just drag and drop that Cinema 4D file into a new comp. There's my little viewer there. I have my Cinema 4D uh, file actually in my viewport, which is really cool. One little mini tip is to use OpenGL so you can remove all the little wireframe stuff. It's a little bit nicer of a render and sometimes even faster than the uh, software version. Uh, basically, this is a very quick preview of of your scene, RAM previews very fast. Now, if I want to export all, or extract all that 3D data, especially that null uh, from this Cinema 4D file, I would just have to go into my Cineware options, go to extract, and there's my little camera morph. The only problem is, if I go ahead and just scrub through, you're gonna see that none of my nulls, none of my lights or anything is actually moving with this scene. So something's wrong. We need to go one step further, and that is to bake out our camera, which is very, very easy. So here's the camera I want to bake out. I'm gonna go into my timeline. I'm going to drag and drop this camera into my timeline. So there it is already. With that camera select, I'm going to go to functions, bake objects, make sure that I have all parameters checked on. And I like to make sure that this create copy is uh, clicked on as well. And we also need to bake expressions to be able to bake all the vibrate tag information that's in the vibrate expression tag and just hit okay. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a new copy. And if we just go ahead and look through it, you're gonna see that we have, even our focal length is baked out because we had all parameters, all expressions, all that good stuff. Everything that's animated will be baked down, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and save this, boop, and jump back into After Effects. Make sure that our uh, scene updated, just cleaned up, it's updating that little file. And now I can select this little Cinema 4D layer again and hit extract. And now you're gonna see we have that camera morph copy. Now, if we scrub through here, or just RAM preview, you should see that all of our 3D information, all of our lights, that comp tag doll should move perfectly with our little 3D scene here. So again, we can go ahead and composite our little lens flares here, which is really nice. So even the expressions are vibrate tag baked out as well, which is very important to remember to have that expressions thing uh, turned on. So one thing you're gonna notice, and this is our, uh, moving on to our second tip here, is in my little scene here, I actually have a background with an environment and environment object and all this good stuff. And you're gonna see that if I go into uh, After Effects, you're not seeing that at all. You're actually just seeing a background. Uh, alpha here. And the problem with that is, is every time you import a Cinema 4D file into After Effects, if I right click and go to interpret footage, main, you're going to see that it's going to think there's an alpha channel there. But I have a background object, okay? Uh, you can see my environment. There's my background object. It's just a blue gradient and it's not coming through. And that's because we have a alpha. So what I'm going to do is just go and say, you know what, ignore that alpha. He's a jerk, don't mind him, just ignore him. He's being annoying. Uh, just click that, hit okay. And now you're gonna see it's gonna get rid of that alpha interpolation. And now you can see we have our blue background in here. And that's kind of like a big thing that I ran into a lot as far as uh, you know, be, having backgrounds come in and stuff like that. It's kind of an uh, extra step you have to take to just you know ignore that alpha and then that background will come 
intact. All right. So one other thing, and it's very handy for when you're using uh, stuff with 2D or anything like that. So if I go ahead and let's just go into my Cineware layer and just change this to standard final. Okay. And let's go into Cinema 4D. And typically when you render out an animation, you're going to you know choose anti-aliasing best. You're going to choose animation filter and save that out. Now the problem with this, and I, I'll just demonstrate it inside of uh, After Effects here. But if I zoom in here and just wait for this to update, let me go to full res. And again, everything, every time you, especially at standard final, every time you actually RAM preview a frame, what's actually happening in the background is Cinema 4D is rendering that frame. So if you have stuff like, you know, uh, blurry reflections, ambient occlusion, stuff like that, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more render intensive. So at that point, it's kind of bad to RAM preview at the standard final. Uh, but here you can see we, we finally have this rendered image pulled out. And you're going to see that our edges are very uh, blurry. Now, if you're using, say, you know, text, which is, you know, continually rasterized, uh, you're going to see that the sharpness of the text does not match with the blurriness of our actual image. So if you're doing a very 2D or uh, you have a lot of shape layers and stuff like that, things that are continually rasterized, you're going to get this mismatch of blurry edges on your Cinema 4D stuff and sharp edges on your uh, continually rasterized stuff. Okay, so one thing I like to do is when you are you know, dealing with 2D-ish scenes or you're trying to composite with shape layers and stuff like that, uh, primarily 2D stuff, what I like to do is just choose not the Gauss animation filter because what the Gauss animation filter does is blurs your edges to prevent flickering on moving objects. Uh, but for 2D stuff, I like to use either Cubic or Sync. So either Still Image, Cubic, or Sync, and I'll just save that out and jump back into After Effects. And now wait and watch. It's going to be very subtle, but you should see the edges sharpen up ever so slightly and match more of the sharpness of our continually rasterized uh, text layer here. Now we're watching this. Watch the edges here as it's going to update, boop, and you can just see how much sharper that looks, right? That was a huge change, okay? So keep in mind, when you're working with 2D, say sketch and tune stuff, choose your anti-aliasing to be best and choose one of the sharper filters. Don't use animation Gauss for stuff like that. All right, so another little tip here, let me go and import another file here that's just going to have uh, some 3D text. Let me go and just create a new comp with this like so there we go and uh, let me just zoom out here so i just have you know some orbiting text nothing nothing too fancy actually there's no camera here at all uh let's go to opengl uh, but the one thing is that one thing that's really cool is you can go and use after effects cameras so here's my camera to be able to uh orbit around and kind of move your 3d footage around now De by default on your Cineware layer, your Cinema 4D layer, it is going to use the Cinema 4D camera. And since there is absolutely no Cinema 4D camera in that file, let me just open that up. Let's go to 3D cam orbit. Yes. You can see there's no, no camera in there at all. Okay. It's just text floating in space. What I can do is go ahead and choose centered comp camera. Basically what centered comp camera does versus just comp camera is in Cinema 4D, 0, 0, 0 is actually dead center. And in After Effects, 0, 0, if you see the XY, is actually in the top left. So what I like to do when I'm using Cinema 4D, uh, Cineware layers is use the centered comp camera. It will negotiate between After Effects's world space and Cinema 4D's world space there. And now, if I use the orbit tool, you can see that I can move around. But it's not working exactly like you would think. I would want to orbit around the actual 3D text here, okay? And the problem is, is that if I go into my camera settings, we're just using a one-node camera. With 3D, when you're using Cineware layers, use a two-node camera. That's the big tip here. Use the two-node camera because what that allows you to do is actually orbit around the actual object itself. So it's more like having a target tag 
on a camera and you can then orbit around that piece of geometry here. So really cool stuff. Now, what if, uh, you know, I had this footage in here. What if I'm doing a bunch of, you know, bumpers or something. I need to do some lower third stuff and I just need to shrink this down to the, you know, to be a bug on you know broadcast TV maybe in the lower right here uh, typically what you'd want to do is you know move this and scale it down but you're gonna see that you can't move this layer side or this layer at all or it'll give you that error okay so one thing I like to do uh, you know typically to get around this you'd pre comp this but I don't like to pre comp more than I really need to so one thing I like to do is if I know I just need to move this and shrink this down or something and, and I don't want to pre-comp it, if it's just a simple transform, what I'll do is go in, get my transform effect. If I could spell transform right, transform. There we go. Haven't had too much coffee yet, so get your distort uh, transform. And now, check this out. Don't need to pre-comp. If I scale this down, I can just go ahead and move this, okay? I can move the position move this wherever I want, and I don't have to pre-comp that layer. So no extraneous pre-comps just to scale things, uh, Cineware layers down or anything like that. Just use a transform, uh, and, and there you go. You can even, you know, do whatever you want. You can skew this layer. Uh, just really cool that you can actually use uh, transform to be able to move this Cineware layer and not have to pre-comp, which is really, really cool stuff. Right, so that's my five handy tips and some little mini ones mixed in there to help you use Cineware a lot better in your workflow. So if you have any questions about anything Cineware or anything covered in this tutorial, please leave a comment. I'll try to get to your questions as soon as I can. If you like this tutorial, please hit the like button. If you like what I'm doing on my channel, please subscribe. I really appreciate that. And as always, really appreciate all of you guys viewing all my tutorials. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye everybody.